You were quite young when you started doing improv, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, I was 16. Um, I wanted to be a jazz musician when I was a kid. Whoa. Yeah. Mm. And, 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 uh, wh- friendship over. <laughs> no, friendship begun. <laughs> there we do. I just checked you off for friendship over. What did I, you go play? ahead. What kind of, what kind of instrument? I played trumpet. And the way I got hooked on jazz, like all great jazz musicians, was a CD ROM video game <laughs> about the history of jazz. <laughs> I thought you were going to say heroin. <laughs> I, my parents got me. It was called Living Jazz. What? Yep. And it was hosted. That's how you got into jazz? Yeah. Not hanging out in smoky clubs? Uh, no. As a five like, year old? Like all the greats, it was. I switched from Encarta to, uh, to Living Jazz. And Living Jazz was like, had sort of the format of a first person shooter, but you, you were total. <laughs> You're totally <laughs> passive, but you're wandering through the history of what? jazz. That's the way it works. That's fantastic. Wow. Yeah, so you're like, I'm going to go to Storyville and watch Louis Armstrong. I'm going to go to Chicago after the Great Migration. And whoop, there's that Lester Young. And Wait a minute, that's incredible. That's how Do you I, ever get to shoot up the place? You never. <laughs> that would be amazing if you play enough living jazz. You just get to be a, like a, what do they call well, it? At one point, I wanted to transition to Grand Theft Auto. That's all. <laughs> Like, there's a lot of jazz history, but then at a certain point, you notice, like, I think I'm in a strip club. <laughs> That's so funny. I just hit Ella Fitzgerald with a baseball bat. <laughs> <laughs> People are really mad at me online. Oh, God. Um, so, I, uh, so that's oh how God. I got into jazz. And then I wanted to be a jazz musician, but then I got braces and I couldn't oh, play no. anymore because I, it messed up my embouchure. But my parents took me because we I had to get braces and they took me to Dr. Chops, who was this. <laughs> Come on. Was that Is a he, jazz musician? No, yeah. Well, he was a jazz dentist. <laughs> okay. And he was, win, he was Winter Marcellus's dentist. And we went to visit him and said, you know, is there anything that can be done? He said, no, but this toothpaste is $30 and you should buy that. And so we did. And then I went back home and the guy who gave me braces, I feel like I've talked about this at some point, but he had a life-size mural of himself in a lab coat, uh, putting braces on the animals in the jungle. Um, and then he also had a portrait of himself dressed as a dentist, working on himself dressed as Superman. Oh what? So this guy was a fascinating character. Yeah, I mean, uh, we got to talk to him too. Yeah. We got to get him <laughs> yes. in here. Uh, I feel like anytime I allude to someone, you would prefer that they were here. And <laughs> I would just say anyone, anyone but. Um, but no, but this is crazy to me, which is that, so you got braces and they can't make a special mouthpiece that, goes over your, or did they, they, they were just trying to discourage you from playing the trumpet. Maybe that was it. My parents got tired of it. But I would take pliers and rip out the wire because I would get so frustrated oh. and I wanted to play. But then I just sort of gave up and I had all this free time where I used to be practicing trumpet. And so my brother had gone to college in New York and he'd gone to an early ASCAD at UCB, the Operating Systems Brigade, and he told me about it. And I thought, oh, that sounds fun. So I would take the train up to New York from Pennsylvania, where I grew up, and 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 I took classes. And back then, the Upright Citizens Upright Citizens Brigade was in this kind of dingy X strip club, where they you remember this? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, they oh, yeah. and they uh, had cleaned out. Yeah, well, he old, remembers. He remembers the strip club. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they cleaned oh, out. The strip, definitely, <laughs> they cleaned out the strip club and uh, and yeah, turned it into a small black box theater. That's right. Yeah. But they would still sometimes find condoms and stuff because I guess it was a house of ill repute. And then also, I guess there was like a mix of. Someone told me that there was like I guess for some reason the strip club was popular with Hasid. So sometimes like these Hasidic guys would come in and like sit down thinking a strip show was about to start, but then they'd just be stuck in like Brett Gelman's one man show or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And like you just end up like watching alt comedy for an hour and they couldn't leave. So just the idea of like these like Hasidic dudes just watching <laughs> it makes me laugh. Anyway. But I but yeah, I I performed I did some stuff with U C B back in the day and I remember going down to that theater and Loving it. They would have, they, they would do a thing where you just go out and do a monologue based on something someone shouted out in the audience. And I remembered finding it incredibly fun and therapeutic. Have you ever had the experience of oversharing? Have you ever done like a monologue or an interview or something and then had that kind of vulnerability hangover thing where you're like, oh, I didn't want to talk about that, but I did. I, pr- I mean, I talk so much. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I probably have, but I don't know that I've ever come to you, Matt, and said, I mean, take out that part where I talked about my younger sister beating me. 
Oh. That was exactly the thing you asked me to yeah. take out. I was just yeah. embarrassed that my younger sister could beat me so easily. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, no, I don't and remember. throughout the course no. of your life, too. It's not, it she wasn't was, an isolated incident. She was three and I was 15. <laughs> and she w totally <laughs> just was hitting me through walls and then falling me into that room and then punching me through another wall. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't no. think so. I don't think so. Yeah. Do you? Sometimes. Do you guys have that? Oh, daily. Uh, really? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. What was I the think, question? Well, Sona has admitted to many crimes that she committed. I used to shoplift. And really? Yeah, yeah, my parents were horrified. But yeah. can I ask you about that? Because so I have so many questions about that, but was it the thrill of shoplifting or was it like you wanted the item? Was it the, you wanted it to shoplift the, or you wanted the, the thing? It was the thrill. Like I, yeah. I mean, I, the first thing I saw was a 45 cent sticker book from Sanrio. Yeah. And I could have, I could get that I could have afforded it at that time but I just was like I'm just gonna put it in my pocket and scrunchies and scrunchies and hair things and I would steal things and I would put them on my head like a hairband and I would walk in front of the uh, customer service oh, reps wow. and that was a thrill but I never like stole a bunch of stuff and ran out. When I, mean, I met Sona, she was running down Olympic Boulevard holding a <laughs> Samsung flat screen, <laughs> a very large one. And then I robbed you, remember? That's right. Yeah, I beat yeah. you with it and yeah. I took everything you had. <laughs> you smashed it over my head, ruining the flat screen, and then took robbed me of $8, which really <laughs> was stupid because the flat screen was worth so much more. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm one of those people that in the way I was raised was someone's always like God is always watching. Mm. So every now and then I would, you know, put gum in my mouth and I would be walking along and crinkle up the tiny little trident wrapper into a tiny little ball and just sort of drop it on the sidewalk and keep walking. And then I would stop <laughs> and oh, walk oh, back oh. and pick it up. And it's not that I'm the best person in the world. It's just that I thought that I can't have that hanging over <laughs> me. Um, and I had a therapist tell me once years ago, you have the largest conscience of any, which is probably a shock to you guys, but he said, you have the largest conscience of anyone I've ever talked to. Um, was and, it? Oh, sorry. And no, I was just saying that those, so those things, the idea of taking even, uh, you know, stealing one Alka-Seltzer from a, from a drugstore, not because I'm better than you, because I'm superior to you. Oh, okay, okay. It's an important clarification. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a really interesting thing. Like, I think um, there was a store where I grew up where if you stole, they would either call the police or they would take a picture of you with the item that you stole and then they would put that picture up in the grocery store. So it's this sort of humiliation. It also feels a little bit like Salem, Massachusetts, yes. 1650. That kind of, uh, this is the way we will shame people and then they will behave or putting people in stocks. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a public humiliation, which is something uh, that maybe used to work. I don't know. We should do more of it. No, well, okay. I Bring thought you back. were saying that's not the way to go. No, I think I think people should be shamed. You're, on board. Okay. you're big. You saw the Crucible that 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 play about the yeah, and you were like, that's aspirational. <laughs> I thought this. I I thought the Crucible by Arthur Miller was a how-to. <laughs> I did. Uh -huh. I said, okay, I'm down with that. Shame on ye. Shame. <laughs> Remember when I tried to dunk you in water to see if you were a witch? <laughs> yes. And all this hair product floated to the surface. Oh, uh, come on. Well, you use a Why? lot. You use a lot. I have curly hair, dude. I know, but various waxes and oils. Come on. No, what do you mean? It's frizzy if I don't. Why do you have to bring that up? I don't know. I, I think there's no control. shame in it. I think someone told me, if, I wonder if the shame thing works as a deterrent because someone told me that, again, these are like unsighted, probably <laughs> bullshit stories, but that shoplifting in 19th century London was like a big like epidemic. So they made it a hanging offense to shoplift and the place. So they, they have these big public hangings and those public hangings were where was where there was the most shoplifting. And stuff. Yeah, because everyone. Oh. Yeah. yeah, it was a great place. to. Sh and also, I think uh, I mean, that was back when you could get shipped off to Australia for, you know, taking a loaf of bread. That's it. If you were starving. Yeah. yeah. And then you're, you know, boo hoo, Australia. Have you been to Australia? It's amazing there. Mm -hmm. I wish I had been shipped off. <laughs> yeah. Instead, we went to America and went to central Massachusetts.
Farm. Hey, Conan, come back. Yeah. Come back. <laughs> hey, buddy. Come back, Conan. Hey, it's our country, uh, too, man. Uh, oh, hey, hey, sorry, man. I blacked right. out for a second. <laughs> okay. I'm just saying, if they had sent me to Australia, oh, which yeah. is where we should have been sent. You would have surfed? No, yeah. <laughs> I'd have like a V shaped torso right now. I'd have like a six pack. I'd look like a Hemsworth if I had gone. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I would. Yeah, it was yeah I not would. Yeah, I would. Australia. I would have lips instead of this. <laughs> Keeping gash for a mouth. <laughs> I'd have eyes that were the right size instead of these beady little rat orbs. Oh they should have. They should have shipped me off to Australia. But no, we had to go to Sturbridge. Oh my god. Yeah, I've never heard the word Sturbridge with so much venom. I know. Sturbridge. <laughs> Shout out to Sturbridge. It's a very lovely place. 